So I want to welcome you um, that have joined with us uh, via the live stream. Uh, we are in person, in house. So there are people in the house. <laughs> so, uh, we welcome you uh, to come um, over to this place where we gather to come in fellowship and be a part of what God is doing. Uh, but we do appreciate you that have tuned in tonight. Maybe some of you are a little bit further. Some of you um, don't even go to our church, but we do welcome you because we are one body in the kingdom. Just a quick announcement before I do get started here tonight. Um, we will be going live roughly around, um, what is it, 7.15? What is it, 8.15? 8.15, uh, because we do start worship at 7.30, and then we run our service in here. We have prayer requests, we take up offering, we do everything that we normally do in a service, and then we bring it into the live stream when the preaching starts. So if you are going to join with us uh, via the live stream, uh, then we do encourage you around 8.15, 8.10, 8.15 is going to be the time where, you, where uh, we will be turning it on on a live stream. So um, if you do have your Bibles tonight, um, go ahead and get them. And we're going to be uh, kind of uh, through the Word of God tonight. We're going to be um, picking scriptures from different areas because uh, we're going to be discussing um, some particulars in the kingdom of God. We're not going to just take a text and begin to elaborate on the text as we normally do. Um, but today I'm going to be speaking to you a little bit about getting back um, to the basics of God in our life. And I believe it's very vital right now as to where we're at as a people, um, as a community of believers. I believe that as a result of what many have experienced in the last year has put uh, many Christians in a form of a spiritual slump um, through all the things that have been happening around, uh, around us and, 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 and things that have been taking place. And uh, I want you to know that um, you don't have to react or respond like the world. We don't belong to the world. We don't operate under the same rules, regulations, and guidelines of the world. We are part of the kingdom of God, where the hand of God moves, where the hand of God blesses, uh, where the hand of God pours out His Spirit. And so therefore, we don't have to act like the world, talk like the world, respond like the world, have the same emotions as the world. We need to lift up our heads and understand that we are men and women that are born again and we belong to the kingdom of heaven tonight. And when God begins to bless and when God begins to pour out His Spirit upon a people, there is nothing that this world can do to stop it or hinder it tonight. Amen. So I want to talk to you tonight about some things that we ought to have in our life that separate you and I from the way that the world responds and so tonight I believe that um, God is going to, uh, my, 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 my hope tonight is that God will awaken some of our spirits tonight. Um, some of us have been um, sleeping spiritually in certain areas, um, and, and, and a lot of it has been as a result of, of your environment, of, of just, just the spirit that's been trying um, to smother the church out. And so I believe that tonight that God um, is going to awaken us tonight. So, in the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, verse 1, um, just go ahead and open up your Bible to, to that, uh, that book, that chapter, and that verse. And so the first thing I believe that God desires to do with His people um, in this time and in this season is He desires to energize your faith, to enhance your faith. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 says this, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things that are not seen. Now understand as, as a result of what we have gone through as, as, as a world, not just as, as Americans, but throughout the world, um, that many people's faith has been challenged. There have been many people that have walked away from the kingdom uh, because of what has been happening around them. There have been many people that have even questioned their faith as a result. How can such a loving God allow this to take place? And so what will happen is Satan will allow these lies to begin to fill your mind where you will then begin to even question your own faith. You will begin to think these things in your mind. 
But Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. The definition for faith can be described as a firm conviction or a confident trust. And so I want to talk to you for a few moments tonight about your faith. I'm going to talk to you about a few different areas, a few different thoughts that I believe that if we exercise these things in our life, that we can regain the spiritual strength that we once operated in, uh, that we were once, you know, allowing to flow through our life. And that's what God wants to do. He wants His church to be strong. And so if you're here tonight or you're listening tonight or you're a part of this tonight, that means you made it through through the weeding out period. There are many people that have walked away from God. There are many people that have tuned out or are no longer a part of the things that God is doing. But you, you know what? You need to look at yourself and say, man, it may have been hard. I, there, there may have been struggles. I, I may have had hardships through this. But look at me. Look at me. I Here I am. I'm still standing. Some Amen. of you may even be holding on by, by, by just a thread tonight. But the reality is, is that you are tuned in tonight. You are in the house of God tonight. And you are standing tonight. And so you need to applaud yourself. You need to say, thank you, Jesus. Yes, thank, thank you, Lord, you, that I made it through that hardship. Because many people didn't, friend. Yes. Many people, when the faith was tested. See, your faith was tested. You're standing tonight. Hallelujah. And that's an amazing thing. Don't you let anybody downplay that tonight. But that is an amazing thing. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6 says this. But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. Without faith, it is absolutely impossible to please the Lord. And so that is why Satan, the enemy, has designed so many tactics to, to attack your faith because if he can steal your faith from you, then it is impossible to please the Lord because our belief in God is simply by faith. See, we don't believe in God because we see Him, because He's tangible, because He's physically here in this place. Our belief in the Lord Jesus Christ is by faith. We stand by faith and believe that 2,000 years ago that God sent His only begotten Son by faith. Yes, there are some his historical proofs and facts to that, but still, we weren't there, we didn't see it, so we have to believe it simply by faith that we trust and believe in the things of God. And without that faith, it is impossible to please Him. And so tonight, I believe that God wants to energize your faith. He wants to bring your faith back to that place where you used to believe God for anything. You remember those times when, I mean, ju just think about this. Think about uh, uh, being a new Christian. Think about having just that, that relationship with Christ and, 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 and everything is new. Uh, and, and you begin to read the Bible and now you just begin to believe God for what His Word says. Your faith was strong. But now you've been through some things and so you look at your life and you realize, man, uh, I'm a I'm a Christian that has been battered, that has been, you know, uh, through the valley of the shadow of death. I'm a Christian that has been through some struggles. And as a result of that, sometimes the enemy will chip away at our faith. There is an opposition to faith, and that is fear. Listen to what Matthew chapter 14 says. Verses 30 and 31 says, But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid, and beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? 
You see, in that story, Peter was a man who was full of faith. And, and the Bible says that then fear overtook him. So the opposite of our faith in God is when the enemy will come and try to bring fear. And he'll bring fear. See, you'll trust God, and you'll be walking through the storms with God. And then immediately, when you take your eyes off of the Lord, and you begin to put them on the storm. And so Satan does a real good job of that, of, of allowing us to focus on the problem. And, you know, even in my own life, you know, I find that, that my greatest anxiety happens. And anxiety to me is a form of fear. And so my greatest anxiety happens when I begin to overthink situations. And I begin to, you know, constantly be in conflict in my mind. And when I let go of these things and I give them to God, and I understand that God is in complete control, and that God knows every step that I'm going to take, and that He's walking with me, when I begin to trust in the Lord, then I begin to walk by faith in God, and I begin to walk on the water, so to speak. But immediately, the enemy enemy will come in that time and he will begin to tell you, you know, you need to begin to focus on the problem. You begin to, you need to begin to look at the situation. You know what? This situation is far worse than you may think. See, that's what the enemy tells us in our mind. And in that moment, our faith then turns into fear. We are no longer trusting God and walking with him by faith. But we are now operating and walking in fear. That is how quick we can begin to lose our faith. That's why the enemy has come to chip away at my faith and at your faith. Romans 10, 17 says, So then faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Do you hear what I said? So then faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. And so you want to know, how, how, how do you get more faith? How do, you, how do you get more faith in your life? Is it something that just supernaturally God just sends it? No, His Word mm -hmm. says, faith comes by hearing. You hear it. And how do you hear it? By the Word of God. Your Bible, the scriptures that are in front of you, the pages that, that are sitting on your lap at this moment, when you begin to open up those pages, what you then begin to do is you begin to build the faith in your life. Sometimes without even realizing that you are doing spiritual exercises and God is building faith inside of you. Because what happens is when you get that word in you and you begin to go through something, what begins to happen is immediately you begin to go through the trial, you begin to go through the fire, and your mind doesn't immediately go to its own thoughts and its own conclusions, but your mind, your, your spirit man begins to reach down into the word and when that enemy comes against you, what happens is the faith of God's word begins to come out of your mouth, come out of your mind, and you begin to see that God is sovereign and He is able. Amen. That is what faith does. Yes. Here's what happens in many people's lives. Many people get up in the morning and what they do is they turn on the news and they feed the news. What is the news? What is the news feed? Negativity. Fear. Look at the news. If you watch the news, everything coming from the news is fear. Everything, whether it's the coronavirus or not. I'm, I'm talking about generally. It's all about this drive-by or this killing or this person that did this. And, and so it's all about fear. Fear sells. And so people are drawn to that. And so people immediately get up and they watch the news. And they're walking through life and, and as they begin to go through things, what they're putting in is what begins to come out. And so I choose. I choose the news as well. But the news I choose is called the good news. Amen. And it's the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so in the morning, instead of turning on the news, open up the good news. And allow that good news to begin to produce the faith that God wants to produce inside of you. You understand what I'm saying tonight? Yes, amen. What news? As a matter of fact, last night, uh, me and my wife were watching uh, a TV show. And um, it ended at 11 o'clock. Uh, it was really good. 
the Law and Order, you know, this really good new one that just came out. And immediately when it ended, um, 11 o'clock, the news, I haven't seen the news in I don't know how long. I don't watch the news. I, it comes on my phone, and I pick and choose what I want to look at. I'm like, mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. you're not going to feed that to my spirit. And so there's, you know, you got to be up with current events. I understand that. So I'll, all right, let me, let me hit this one. Let me see what's going on. But last night, I was sitting on the couch, and it was after 11, and the news was on, and I found myself kind of watching it, and then I told her, what are we doing? <laughs> turn, turn, it, turn it off! Like, like I don't even know, it just, it just happened. And all of it was negative. I was like, wow, that unbelievable. <laughs> and so there it was. And so um, I, I want to encourage you um, that in the morning, uh, instead of going to that news, Go to the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ, because that good news is what is going to produce faith inside of you. So that when trials and troubles and tribulations come your way, you're not going to go to fear. See, you, I'm just going to use this as an example. Um, right away, people go to, if they're watching this news, and this news is just talking this and that and that, and everybody's dying and this and that, then immediately when something begins to happen, your mind goes to the fear of that news. But when you fill yourself with God's word and you allow it to produce faith inside of you, then when reports and things start to happen around you, your that, that good news that you filled your life with, it begins to come out. And you begin to have the faith to come against the things that are trying to chisel away at your life. Second thing I want to talk to you about tonight is fortifying your hope in the Lord. We have to get back to the place where we have great hope in the things of God. Let me give you a definition of hope. The happy anticipation of something good. You know, we live in a season where many people are living in hopeless situations. There are many people and they are they are feeling the hopelessness of society. But what did I say earlier? I said, we, we don't operate, we're not governed by the things of this world. We operate under a, com- a completely separate law, under the law of God, where the world may be in shambles, the world may be, you know, I mean, just, just things may be devastating to them, but we have hope. Amen. And we walk in that hope. Amen. We walk in a place where the hand of God can move and produce something where there doesn't seem to be a, a, a way of escape. The, the, the hand of God, the word of God, the blessing of God, the favor of God produces all these things. And so we have to walk with a greater hope. See, we see people all day long and they walk around in hopelessness. And what, what a refreshing thing it is to come across people that are like-minded, that are born-again believers. I was talking with a guy today. And, um, and man... Me and him were just, we were just, I mean, we were, our spirits were in agreement. And we were talking, we were flowing, we we understood the kingdom. And it was as if we could complete each other's sentences. It was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we walk with a hope. Amen. The world yeah. is looking at things as this, it is a hopeless situation. But you and I. We walk in a greater hope than this world can understand. Romans 8.25 But if we hope for that we do not see, then do we with patience wait for it? For if we hope for that which we do not see, then do we wait with patience for it. Hope preserves us. Hope gives us the ability to hang on even when the immediate situation in front of us has not yet changed. The Bible says that they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as an eagle. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. So if we hope for that which we don't see, 
then it gives us the ability to patiently wait on God. And that is something that ought to separate you and I from the world. The world immediately wants to run into something. They immediately need to see results. But we as men and women of God, hope allows us to be preserved during the waiting period. I mean, doesn't the waiting period, isn't it a hard time? When you're at a place and you're waiting for the blessing of God, you're waiting for the answer of God, you're waiting for the end result of what God is going to do. And in that moment, the thing that gives you the ability, the thing that preserves you in that season and in that time is this one word, hope. It is the hope you have to know that God is undoubtedly going to do something favorably for your life. You have hope tonight. Without hope, we cannot see our families coming to Christ. That's hope. Hope is seeing a situation that looks devastating, a situation that looks dire, a situation that looks as if there's no good end in sight but hope helps you to hold on and I believe that our hope has been attacked and so I hope that we can resurrect that in our spirit tonight to once again walk with that great hope that God's word teaches us about Romans 15 for, for whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. I'm going to say that again, Romans 15, 4. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning. Or whatever things God had written and placed as scripture. That we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. So I wonder tonight, do you have hope tonight? Has your hope been fortified and strengthened tonight? <clears throat> Listen to what 1 Peter 1.13 says. Wear up, gird up the loins of your mind. Be sober. And hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought <coughs> unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. It's important, friends, that we walk in the hope of God's word in the hope of what we know that God is going to do. Without hope, there is hopelessness. Hopelessness says, it's hopeless. Give up. It's not worth it. It's not worth fighting for. It's not worth standing for. And that's what the enemy has tried his hardest to bring to the kingdom. Even during this season, there was a lot of hopelessness, even in Christian lives, during, during this, this hardship that many of us have endured. And there were many people, and they felt so hopeless. And it never should have been. It never should have been. As Christians, as men and women of God, listen to what I'm talking to you about tonight. The things that I'm sharing with you about tonight are things that, that are definitely... Um, able for the Christian to grab a hold of. No matter what's taking place around us, understand friends, we live by a different set of laws in the kingdom of God. Though the world may be struggling, they may be in hardship, there is something that God does to preserve His people. And through all this, I pray that you were one, that no matter what was happening, you saw hope. You saw light at the end of the tunnel. Or were you once saying, the sky is falling, the sky is falling, oh no, what are we going to do? Or were you saying, this too, this too shall pass. 
this too shall pass. See, that's how we, we, we should have been the beacon of light to the world. The world, the sky is falling. What are we going to do? The world's coming to an end. Oh my gosh, everybody go run to the hills and hide. Go and buy all the bread and buy all the toilet paper. Oh, they did. <laughs> you remember all of that craziness that was happening? And you know what the Christians, what we should have been? We should have been the beacon of light. Speaking hope to these people. Speaking hope to that generation. Third thing I want to look at tonight is it's time to reactivate your love. During this time, I believe a lot of people, a lot of people uh, became very selfish. Um, and were just so concerned with only themselves. That, that, that's what happens when, when, when hardships begin to happen. People begin to go back to their normal nature, their unsaved nature. And so rather than operating and functioning in love, the opposite of that is being very selfish and being all about yourself. I'm going to give you the definition of love. As found in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 13, 4 through 8. Love suffers long. It is kind. Love doesn't envy. Love haunteth not itself. It is not puffed up. Love does not behave itself unseemingly. Love doesn't seek its own. Love is not evilly provoked. Love does not think evil. Love does not rejoice in iniquity, but it rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails, but whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Where there be knowledge, knowledge, it shall vanish away. We need to once again begin to walk and operate in the love that God has placed in our hearts. I believe a form of expression of that love happens when we begin to care for others. Now, I, I, I know, I, I've seen the church in action um, during this time, and how when somebody got sick, we loved on them, we cared on them, we did, you know, we did. Um, but I believe God is calling us to a higher level of love. It is the love of God in our life. It is the love of God for one another that shows the world who Jesus truly is, is what the Bible teaches. The love of God. Listen to how important love is. We know that we have passed from death onto life. 1 John 3.14 We know, listen to the scripture, we know that we have passed from death onto life. Or we know that instead of going to hell, we are going to heaven. Because what? Because we love the brethren. Then listen to what it goes on to say. He that loves not his brother abides in death. The love that you and I produce, the love that we have for one another, is of utter importance in the determination on where we will spend eternity. We know that we have passed from death onto life because of the love that we have for the brethren. And so where is, where is love in your life? How do you feel about your fellow brother? How do you feel about the people in the world that don't know Jesus? Do you see the urgency of the times that are at hand and how urgent it is for you and I to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. 
to be the light that is on the hill that is not covered and hidden under the bushel. What kind of love are you producing out of your life? See, everything that I'm talking to you about tonight, I believe that it was all attacked during this season. And these are all important fundamentals of Christianity that ought to be produced out of our life. See, we can't just begin to function and just say, okay, let's just kind of, kind of go. No, we need to examine and check ourselves. Yes. And we need to say, God, are the things that I am doing, am I operating in love? 1 John 3, 22 and 23. And whatsoever we ask, we receive of Him, because we keep His commandments, and do those things that are pleasing in His sight. And this is His commandment, that we should believe on the name of His Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, as He gave us this commandment. How is your love tonight for the kingdom? You know what, 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 what pushes somebody to go and evangelize in the streets? Not just one time, but to continually want to go out and, 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 and be a soul winner? It's love. It's love. It's, you, you see somebody out there and, and you just see people going about their life. And it is love for your fellow human that says, you know, there, there's a million other things that people could be doing selfishly. There's a million other things. We have an outreach coming up, and there are a million other things you can literally be doing on that Saturday night at 6 o'clock. Now, if you already have plans, and you've got something you know, that you're doing, and, and, you, and you had those plans before the calendar came out, then okay. But if the calendar came out, and then you said, oh, it's just an outreach, I'm just going to go ahead and do this. No, so where's your love? Do you, do, you, do, you, do you care? Do you, I mean, we're, we're doing it corporately. Are you doing it, you know, on your own? Oh, that's good. But more than likely, people aren't. They're just not doing it. And so it is the love that we have for people that puts us in that place of being uncomfortable. It's because I love you that I tell you. And you, you look at my flyer and you throw it on the floor and you mad dog me. And you tell me to get away from you and get out of your face. That happens. That's what happens on the outreaches. Maybe not to you girls because you walk around so sweet. <laughs> but I don't know how to be sweet. I just come off, you know, here, here. <laughs> and people don't want to hear it. I mean, I don't jam them and tell them, you know, mean things. I give them the gospel. But a lot of times there's people, and the enemy will check you. He'll check your pride at the door. Guys will tell you stuff. And your old nature wants to say something back. <laughs> and you got to put a big smile on your face and say, man, Jesus loves in your heart, I love you, man. You know, I love you. I'm doing this because because I love you. Because I know that God can change your life. Amen. It is love that puts people in those situations. It is love that sent Jesus to the cross. It is love that allowed him to be beaten and spat upon and crucified. That he be eventually died on that cross. It was love that kept him on the cross. When he at any given moment could have called down the angels of God to come and wipe down all of those soldiers in the snap of a finger. But it was love that kept him on that cross that allowed him to go through that uncomfortable situation in his life in that moment, that torment, that hardship. And so it's love in your life that will allow you to go through those, through those hard places tell somebody about the love of Jesus. What a beautiful thing it is to be a soul winner. What a beautiful thing it is to, to, to have the, the privilege and the honor of leading somebody into the throne room of heaven. We literally have been given that responsibility. Do you understand the importance of that responsibility? That, that your lack of not sharing the love of God, of not having Love for humanity, your lack of not doing that can literally be the difference between somebody spending eternity in heaven or spending eternity in hell. Simply because you were uncomfortable. You, didn't, you know, I, I, I can't stand being rejected. There's nothing I, I, I hate more than rejection. And when we go on an outreach, I get rejected 95% of the time. 
When we're out there and we're telling people about Jesus, rejection is part of it. And that's the same thing that Christ went through. He went through rejection after rejection after rejection. I mean, can, can you understand his ministry? Can you understand that he came and he did nothing wrong? He healed the sick, opened the eyes of the blind, set the captive free, brought hope to hopeless situations. And for that, he was beaten and mocked and eventually killed. But it was his love for you and I that allowed him to go all the way to the cross. What kind of love do you have tonight? for the things of God, for the people of God. What about your joy tonight? Where is your joy tonight? Do you have joy? Joy is, is a true mark of a believer. And so I believe some of us tonight, um, you need to get your joy back. You, you need to get your joy back, man. I'm telling you. The joy, the Bible says that the joy of the Lord is my strength. And I'll tell you, man, there is nothing greater than walking in that joy, than knowing that you are separate, you are separate from the world, that God has separated you, and He has filled you with the joy. We have the ability, we have the opportunity to be filled with the living water, and in that living water it overflows with the joy of God. And so you need to stop walking around with a cara de chancla. <laughs> And you need to start understanding that, man, I've got the joy of the Lord. I've got the joy of Jesus in my heart, in my life. Man, there ain't nothing like it. It, it becomes contagious. People want some of that. Especially in the world that we're living in. People are walking, and they don't have joy. They don't, you know, they're, they're walking around, man, and they're mad. They're angry. They're having a hard time with life. And then here you come with your big old smile. <laughs> what are you all happy about? Don't you know this is what's going on and that's what's going on? Man, the joy that I have doesn't come from the world. We used to sing a song. This joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me. This joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me. This joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me. The world didn't give it, the world can't take it away. You understand that? The world didn't yeah. give it to you. You're, you none of you guys saying you guys didn't know the song. <laughs> You're all looking at us. Is this not fire? Up? <laughs> can, we, can we please do fire up? <laughs> but I'm telling you, friends, God, God just wants to fill you with joy, man. His joy is available. It doesn't matter what's what's happening around us. You remember, you're not part of that world. You are part of the kingdom of God, and you have access to all these things that I'm talking to you about tonight. You are not controlled by the environment that is outside of us. But you are led by the Spirit of the living God. And the Spirit of God will fill you with His joy. John 15, 11, These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. That is Jesus speaking. These things have I spoken to you. Christian, man, and woman of God. Wipe that off your face and understand that my joy, it might remain in you. And that your joy might be full. Not halfway, not a quarter, not a little bit, not a little pray. But full of joy. The joy of the Lord. John 16, 24. Hitherto have you asked nothing in my name, ask, and you shall receive, mm -hmm. that your joy may be full. Man, God wants to fill you, friends, with his joy. But are you willing to allow the joy of the Lord to fill your life? Last thing that I want to talk to you about tonight that isn't offered to the world. The world can't get this, friend. What I'm about to share with you right here tonight, the world the world isn't offered it. They, they get a false form of it. Um, but we in the kingdom, 
um, we are we are given the opportunity, and that is God's peace, Amen. the peace of God. There is nothing greater in this world. Everything that I talked about here today, there is nothing greater in this world than God's peace, because God's peace in the midst of everything that can be the tempest that is rising around you. God's peace will sustain you. God's peace will keep you. God's peace will hold you. Finally, brethren, be perfect. Be of good comfort. Be of one mind. Live in peace. The God of love and peace shall be with you. You know, God, He just, He's a wonderful Father. And, and if there's one thing that I've completely understood is that God's peace is so real. Some of us have come from backgrounds where we lost our mind. Lost our mind. You know, just our minds were, 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 were full of chaos and Afflicted and violent and and just just a mess. And to understand that you were once in that state of mind, that you were once that person, and to know that that God can take that individual. And when you rest in Him and you follow Him and you surrender to Him. That all of that turmoil, even when you think that you are beyond the point of being healed mentally, when you think that you, you could never have peace because you're so tormented, you're, you, you, know, you, you just feel the impact of the enemy just infiltrating your mind. And to stand in the presence of God and have complete peace. Just the peace of God in your mind. And for some of you that have experienced what I'm talking to you about tonight, you can truly appreciate what the peace of God brings to our lives. I say this, I probably said this a hundred times, the peace of God is this, is that, man, you're just going through life and, 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 and nothing spectacular has happened around you. And man, just the peace of God. You're just, you're just gliding on His peace. Man, life is, man, life is good. I may not be rich. I may not have everything that the world has. I may not have the finest cars and, you know, the finest clothes. You may see me wearing the same shirt every week. <laughs> literally. <laughs> but wow, man. You know what? You can have the world and everything it has. You can go to your casino and win big time and, and, and think that's going to give you all the answers. You know, you can surround yourself with as many women as you want or as many men as you want. All the things that you think are going to fulfill you in life. And I don't need nothing but Jesus. Amen. Man, it's just, it's just, just, just me and Jesus. And just, man, there's just a peace there. That's the amazing peace of God. And, and there's many people and they've lost that peace and they're uncertain and they're unsure and they're they're struggling in their minds while well, some tonight God wants to just he wants to bring that peace back into your life just just the quietness you know if you've ever been on like a, a lake in the early morning and you begin to look out there and you know five five thirty in the morning and nobody's on the water yet it just it just looks so That's how Hume Lake was till we showed up. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was a peaceful place. But Mark said, oh, why did I invite this? <laughs> uh, we were just having a good time in the Lord, though. We weren't, we, weren't getting, we weren't getting crazy by the world standards. But it's, uh, <laughs> the lake was just so... Very peaceful place, and 
<laughs> that's the peace that that God wants to just continuously pour out upon our lives. So listen to what Proverbs, I'm closing here, what Proverbs chapter 16, verse 7 says. When a man's ways please the Lord, he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. Imagine that. That God even controls that situation. You know that person that's just constantly well, the Bible says that when your ways are pleasing to the Lord, that the Lord will cause that turmoil to shut down. Amen. And he'll turn it into a theme of peace. <laughs> that even his enemies will begin to be at peace with him. And so tonight I spoke with you about some particular subjects that I believe are are important to our moving forward. That we have to evaluate our spiritual lives, that we have to do a self-examination to make sure that our faith is at the place and at the level that it needs to be. That we aren't walking in hopelessness, but we're walking in the hope of the day. That we aren't, we aren't carrying ourselves full of selfishness, but we're walking in the love of God that we once again take on the joy of the Lord and allow that to be our strength. And that we walk in the peace that God has given us. See, what I shared with you, these five thoughts, these five areas, these five things, this, this separates us as Christians from the world. We have access to these things. And when you combine these things, we get to walk and live a, a fulfilled life. We get to walk a, a, a life uh, that that this is the life that God has intended for us. Not to walk as a struggling Christian full of turmoil, but to walk as a confident man and woman of God, walking in the confidence of the Lord. And then, when all of these things begin to fire on all cylinders, you begin to walk as a living epistle of what God's Word teaches, and it becomes attractive. It becomes attractive to those that are all around you. See, we want people to come to Christ, and many people are watching your life. But man, if you're not walking in love, then they ain't attracted <laughs> to what you got. If you got no faith, if you're walking around hopeless with no peace, like this, <laughs> yeah, I'm a Christian. I don't want none of that, man. <laughs> I don't want. I don't want your Jesus. No. That that's not attractive. That Jesus ain't attractive. And, and it's not based on how well things are going in our life. The things that I shared with you tonight are not based on how well things are going in our life. Mm -hmm. Things in life may be hard. There may be struggles. But it doesn't mean you can't walk empowered in this way. Amen. And be attractive to the world. Where people would say, man, I see Jesus in you. Amen. Let's bow our heads tonight. Reverence to the Lord. Tonight, um, as we prepare to close, a couple of things we're going to do tonight. First thing is um, opportunity for salvation, rededication, anything of that sort. Um, you know, maybe tonight, um, you know, you feel that you need to recommit in some areas. Um, you know, you have that opportunity, and then after that, we're, um, we'll, we'll open up the altar for prayer. Maybe there's something... A specific you need prayer for maybe one of these five um, areas that I spoke to you about tonight maybe uh, you can relate to that tonight and maybe the, the Lord um, just wants to just wants to fill you just wants to help you tonight um, we believe on the laying on of hands we believe in the Holy Spirit we believe that God comes and uh, and, and, and God can touch us in a moment uh, when we respond to him and so if you're in this place tonight and maybe um, you you there's you know you want to recommit you want to rededicate uh, maybe you've never given your life to the Lord you're watching live stream um, we're going to give that opportunity tonight and so uh, if there are anybody in this place tonight that's something um, you want to do tonight Amen. Uh, praise the Lord. Brother wants to uh, just recommit you know.
know you you know you weren't out there doing anything bad or anything. I just wanted to yeah, refocus. Yeah, yeah, focus. yeah, refocus, yeah. recommit. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. I got you, brother. And so I um, just want you to repeat this with me. Just say, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. I come tonight before your presence. I come tonight before your presence. And I just uh, recommit my heart tonight. I recommit my heart tonight. Uh, to you, Lord. To you, Lord. And to your ways, God. To your ways, God. Um, I submit myself. I submit myself. To your will, Father. To your will, Father. Not my will. I pray that you would lead me. I pray that you would lead me. I pray that you would guide me. I pray that you would guide me by your Holy Spirit. By your Holy Spirit. Father, let me hear your voice. Father, let me hear your voice in the direction that I want to go. In the direction that I want to go. And if you say no, Lord, and if you say no, Lord, that I would go the other direction. I would go the other direction. But any door, but any door that you would tell me to go through, that you would tell me to go through, that I will walk through with, Lord. That I will walk through, Lord. In complete obedience. In complete obedience. Father, I pray your strength. I pray your Holy Spirit would rest upon me, lead me, guide me, protect my mind, strengthen me for the trials that lie ahead, that I, Lord God, would remain faithful and committed as a true disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. I ask this tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, I lift up my brother tonight before you, as he tonight, Lord, has come and he felt in his heart that he needed to rededicate uh, just some areas in his life, that he wanted just uh, a fresh commitment tonight, Lord God. And so, Lord, I pray that tonight, as he makes this new covenant uh, before you, Lord God, I pray that, Lord, that you would give him the strength um, to walk in this covenant, Lord God, that although... Uh, trials and temptations and, and, and even things that may not necessarily be sin but there may be things that will come to try to distract him or complicate what you have called him to do. And so Holy Spirit I pray that in those times and that in those moments that Lord God that he would bring to remembrance Holy Spirit would bring to remembrance Lord God the covenant and the commitment that he had made to you, Lord God. I pray you empower him, strengthen him, Lord God, because in his own power and his own ability, he is not capable. But oh, under the power and influence of your Holy Spirit, God, we know that you will give him the grace that is necessary to accomplish and fulfill the destiny that you have placed on his life. Not only his life, but upon him and his wife, Lord God, upon his family, upon his home. Lord, we love you and we bless you tonight, Lord, and we honor you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So tonight, um, if uh, you need prayer, you want me to, you know, pray with you on anything, um, you know, pertaining to the message tonight, um, if not, we're going to go ahead and we'll close in a general word of prayer. But let's stand to our feet tonight. Um, if you need prayer tonight, something you want to, um, you know, just respond um, to the Lord tonight. Amen. Uh, we'll pray with you. If not, we'll just go ahead and, and seal this message tonight. Father, we thank you tonight, Lord, uh, for your word. We thank you for your precious Holy Spirit. And Father, we we ask that, um, that you would lead us and that you would guide us. And in these five areas, these five things that we discussed tonight through your word, um, as we went through scripture, and, uh, and, and and we, we, we grounded it in Scripture tonight, Lord God. Um, I pray that, Lord, that if there be any that lack in any of these areas, um, your word declares that we have not because we ask not. And, Lord, there were some particulars that were spoken on how we can obtain certain things, um, not according to what I think um, or my opinion, uh, but according to your word. And we know that your word has not changed. It remains the same, um, Lord God, yesterday, today, and forevermore, your word has never changed, Lord God. And so we stand upon your word. We thank you that today that your word is as relevant today as it was um, when it was just in the mouth, when it was just an oracle, God, when it wasn't even the written word yet, Lord God, that your word still remains today. And so, Father, we love you, we bless you, and we honor you, and we give you all the praise and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Donald, pray for the food, please. Lord God, we thank you for bringing us here today, Lord God. We ask that you bless the food. We ask to make a nourishing to our bodies, Lord God. Remember the less fortunate, Lord God. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.